Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the first class uh, of 20, 2019. Um, so I'm still used, I'm still saying 2017 in my head. I don't, I don't know where 2017 and 2018 went. I honestly don't know. Uh, but here we are in January 2019. Um, uh, feels weird, but I'm happy to be back. And uh, a couple of announcements. Portrait Studio sale has been extended to the end of January. I felt a little bad uh, about it being six month waiting period between now and the next sale which is going to be June I decided against April uh, Google Plus might close any minute um, this means that we need another place to recenter our community our community or it's like the mecca of our community is the, is the, is the, um, the Google Plus uh, group so what we will be doing is moving over into reddit uh, it should be easy but that's just going to be a placeholder until we find another forum type um, in order to run those websites that let us do recreate basically Google Plus, it's a lot of money a month to run it. And it's not just a lot of money, but it's a lot of money as well as a limit for the guests and clicks per web per page uh, for the whole thing. So it's like really, really fishy, trying to like squeeze every penny out of the user. Um, so if I do, uh, you know, go in that direction, I would need community support for that. Um, if you guys want that kind of thing outside of Reddit, but for now I do have a subreddit. Um, if you guys want to find it, I'm, I don't have the link handy right now, but um, uh, Reddit will probably be where our community moves into. So there's 9,100 uh, or so members. Please spread the word that the subreddit is where we will be moving um, until where we will refuge as, as, as migrants until... Uh, further notice. Uh, so I will send up, a, 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 put up a, a little uh, link here. If you guys don't know how to use Reddit, now's the time. I don't know how to use Reddit. I've never, I mean, I know how to use it basically, but I'm not really familiar with the uploading process. I've never uploaded a thing there. Other than my ask me anything and some random memes I've visited, I don't know what, what it is all about. Um, but I will still link it, and uh, if you don't know how to use it, it's just a very basic forum, text-based forum posting place, um, which will be pretty simple to, to get to get used to soon, um, you know, really quickly. Um, so I'll be posting that up. Kind of disappointing about the whole thing. I mean, we have 10,000 members. It took us years to build, um, and it's just not enough for Google to, uh, to believe that we are worth keeping uh, up. But uh, I've always known that Google Plus was going to come down. I just didn't realize it would be so soon. But um, and it's no longer in June or August this year. It's moved, been moved up into April. And then they just keep having more and more weird security breaches. And Google Plus has been very weird, if you guys haven't noticed. It's just like finding old history, uh, history calls and making it seem like they were last week. Stuff like that. Really creepy. Um, so I'm happy to be done with it. But at the same time, our community is massive, and we do everything here. And so the Reddit, uh, oh, there it is. Um, the Reddit, the subreddit, for me, will be here. Uh, we'll have our sections on the side as we're used to. I'll still go to miscellaneous. I'll still go to 14-day challenge submissions. I'll click on them, and then I'll find a recent post based on the date. I'll click on them. Hopefully, we can have image features, um, image like pictures, uh, instead of having to click to see the image, you can just see the image preview. That's what my team's working on right now. Uh, but if we can't figure that out, we'll just click to see the image and that'll be that until we find a better image sharing wall uh, for us. If you have any recommendations for a stable website uh, that we can use as a community that's really easy to use, that's not for pay, that people can just sign up for, um, please let me know so that we can uh, find a better alternative than Reddit. But Reddit seems pretty solid. It's never under fire or under threat for closing. Um, and so it seems like a very safe way for us uh, to, to run this community. But there's always Facebook, though I hate Facebook. I hate anything Facebook. But for now, uh, if we don't get Reddit up and running, uh, apart from Facebook's image compression, it seems like a nice alternative. I always have my Facebook group. If you guys want to go there, um, uh, and uh, and we just can move from there. So uh, I think that's it. One more community post uh, announcement. One more community announcement is the villain challenge. The villain challenge is going to be a little bit different this time. It's going to be massive. It's going to start February first. I'm just going to hand out the brief February first, but you guys can get started on it basically right now. Um, it'll be due uh, February thirty. Uh, February what is it? February twenty eighth. Um, and uh, it'll be an illustration, and it will be non-modern. It has to be fantasy old age. 
fantasy old age narrative for a villain. I'll, you guys will have to write your stories out. Um, it's a very, very highly narrative based villain design. Um, the character has to be exploding in some kind of magical power, so there's a magical element involved. Um, I will be giving this uh, same assignment to my uh, apprentices for anyone interested on Patreon, but it'll be, we'll have a little bit more requirement um, attached to it. And I think that's it. Cannot wait. I cannot wait for the villain challenge. I, I love just anything villain. I mean, you know me. Uh, so I can't wait to see what you guys write, what you guys paint. It's going to be amazing. Uh, so let's get started. I saw a couple of these pieces posted. Um, working from reference, and uh, I'm just going to talk about capture and contrast, blocking in, sculpting, all the good stuff to get us back in the in the in the way of things here in this community. Um, okay, so uh, also please focus on the glass now. Uh, no more chit chatting, please. Thank you. <clears throat> so what you have here is if we take a look at your value range on the forehead, which is a light spot. Um, from this border line down. So this border line is a forehead eyebrow line and this line down should all be shadow because that's the recess section of the skull. This line up should all be light just like we see here. So squint your eyes everybody. You squint your eyes enough that her shadow of her eye socket looks like glasses. Squint your eyes here but there's just way too much shadow up here in this area that does not belong there. And this is the kind of stuff you're blocking in early on in the painting process. Okay. So I'm just grabbing a big old brush and brushing that right across. All right, this has a lot to do with your core shadows. Another big problem is the fact that it's not bright enough either. So it's not separated, but not bright enough. You have a nice beard shadow going on around the face. The light is coming from the top down, kind of to the right, um, our right. Oops. So I'm just creating these avenues here, these little roads of light. And I'm just following what I'm seeing here. So a lot of you attended my after hours kind of like little hangout yesterday and so many asked the question about blocking and sculpting and how much time I spent with blocking. And it has a lot to do with capturing these really, really important core shadows. So look at this big brush that I'm just throwing across the whole thing. That's part of the eyes, this entire shadow that recesses in into the hairline and creates this cast shadow. All right, another one. Your block here, your block, this really low nose block is too low. It's starting to look a little Neanderthal, especially for a young female face like this. That needs to be corrected. It's a little bit higher on hers, way higher, almost at the line of her upper eyelid. That's where the recess line is of the nose, where yours was lower. Look for landmarks like this. Look for little uh, sinks and lines between different features. It helps you capture a better image. <clears throat> Then we're going to talk about the ladder climb from highest elevation to lowest. We start off with the nose. And then moving into the top of the highest part of the forehead. This is important for skin because skin is supple. It has a lot of moisture in it. I'm not so worried about the, tra the trail of these brush strokes. First of all, they look good. They're nice. People love seeing the trail of brushes and work. But uh, also, don't fear them because they're giving you more than they are taking. I know it makes things look messy and students love stuff that's clean as they paint. I think you guys spend way too much time needing the picture to be clean as you're painting. Um, and that's just, it's just going to have to be something you learn to get to deal with. The, the painting looks a little messy and um, kind of out of control for a while. I'm also going to throw a nice big brush stroke here. And the highlights on her eyes are really not that strong. You've made them very strong because of your history with art. You know, what you found as the most appealing thing. The waterline is one of the most important uh, blocks to start working on when you're detailing. It really brings out the, the beauty in the eyes, that really strong waterline. 
<clears throat> so what I'm going to be including soon in my kind of like Patreon tier is hopefully a private tutoring tier. I'm going to see how I feel with my workload for the new year because everyone books with me for private tutoring, but I also want a cheaper alternative for private tutoring for those interested. It's going to be a group of four or five students in one group. Um, and it's, it's a lot cheaper than the single hour portfolio reviews. Another thing that I'm going to be doing is finding one of my pieces that I've painted and letting it run full length recording on a stream or, uh, yeah, a stream and, uh, and, and just commenting on it. So if it's not for the faint of heart, there's a lot of people who would just want rather watch the time lapse on Patreon. But, um, for this new tier, it's going to include full length seminars, uh, uh, kind of like a master portfolio, I mean, portraiture class, and, uh, and it's just going to be me talking through every single individual brushstroke um, live. Maybe I'll speed up the, the, the process just a little bit, just so that it's, it fits within one hour or an hour and a half, so I bring down a three-hour process into an hour and a half, which is still a long period of time, but, uh, but that's upcoming as, upcoming as well. <clears throat> so... There's a little triangle here, so this little bit of shadow needs to be moved. I'd rather do that with a larger brush stroke, just to show you the charm in using such a large brush stroke for this. And then we have a nice shadow line for the interior here. Alright, and then we've got separations. Now we're detailing, and your brush will naturally shrink. As you move, your brush shrinks. A lot of you are wondering, when do I start shrinking my brush? It, you will naturally w w have to. You've already addressed the larger stuff. You're going to start seeing smaller patterns and lines and shapes. For instance, the lower eyelid triangle right here, this little triangle, kind of like a diamond shape. <clears throat> I just discovered that, whereas I didn't see that five, ten minutes ago. And I'm going to have to address which parts are the hottest parts. So which parts are the most exposed to the light? values that are specific to one half or another depending on the direction of the light source. This is a hot spot up here because it breaches all the all the valley, all the cavity, all the darkness of the top of the lower half of the sphere and sits right at the top where all the highlights are happening in the hair. But it's not just the top down, it's the top down right. So that means we're going to have another hot spot, almost a marriage of values between the side of the nose and the cheek. And then we're going to have some really important gradients happening down here. First of all, it's a really soft face. The excessive use of back and forth texture use, this, these brush strokes, it's, it's not advanced texturing and brush strokes. This is just anxiety. Um, and I would just get rid of all that. It's not doing much for your painting. Especially if you're going for a render, uh, which you were. You weren't going for a rough work. I wasn't seeing that much happening. I'm going to stop with, start with softening that up and then move into those larger pieces. And this is where we start cleaning up those ugly, uh, ugly like um, tails of the brush strokes. Lips over rendered as usual in this community. You guys really need to take it easy with those lips. I don't know. It's 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 just it's never there's never been something in our history in the way we developed. I mean, anime eyes. I understand why eyes are always causing trouble, but I'm not sure why you guys overdraw lips time and time again. There's another core shadow missing for the upper half of the cylinder of the lips. The core, the the the, the geometric equivalent of a lip, is a cylinder. She kind of has this almost squared shape happening here. She's got a very fine laugh line just there. And then the top part of the lip over rendered. Too much edge work. Not enough radial shading on the edges of the mouth. Really important. Radial shading, if you don't know what that is, just do a quick little search in my video history on YouTube and you'll be able to find a nice video or two for that. One thing you can trust is that if you're starting, if you're just starting, I mean, I did make a playlist for those who are just starting. It's right there on my front page. But 
if you're just starting, you can trust that a lot of these fundamental terms are repeated. So radial shading, blocking, that's all the stuff I've talked about, along with like the nuances per photo reference. And I'm just smudging using my number four smudge brush on really low strength, doesn't need a lot. The larger the section, the larger my smudge brush is. Okay, the nose is a little bit um, problematic because you've added this extra little bit of anatomy around the nose that you never needed. Trust your reference, you don't need that little button there. And the core shadow carries a little bit higher. It's a very soft piece, very old style Hollywood photo, soft light, soft, soft, soft. Females equal soft. So a lot of that um, filtering going on. I'm just smudging as I go. Keeping my smudge away from the eyes. I really don't need to smudge the eyes any more than that. A little bit of light above the eyebrows just there. Might need to do a quick little block on the side here for her temples but this part of this half of the temple is getting a lot of light <clears throat> and then I'm going to just start detailing. See how zoomed out I am? Another staple if you're not this zoomed out in your work you're, I'm not even sure what you're doing how can you paint anything? How can you assess the gradient of anything or the movement of any core shadow on the surface geometric or otherwise if you're not zoomed out it's just it doesn't work a little bit of that brow bone elevation breaches through the core shadow and catches some light right under the brow bone here and a lot of it here as the light again is moving uh, favoring one half over the other the most outward reaching part of the eyeball is catching some light you see the amount of realism emerging all about the core shadows. You had the eyes where they belonged, you had the nose, and a lot of you do this. You know, I'm, I'm drawing everything as I'm supposed to, and anatomically I know what I'm doing, but my work still has that lack. If it has a lack, it's mostly to do with what you're doing with your core shadows. You probably don't have a lot of meditation on your core shadows. You're just kind of letting things happen as they as as they circle around these main features you thought were, the, were what, what carry well, we're what carry the painting which is not true it's your core shadow and the relationship between the core shadow and the surface and what I always talk about okay so now some more gradients moving down yes there's some bounce light on the neck but not enough to completely undo the fact that it's part of a cavity you should carry that neck nice and low into the values Okay, and then there is the fact that the nose is a lot of softness to it. It's a very soft, textured surface. She has fat on her bones, and she was feminine. So you don't want to throw this big, mean bodybuilder steroid edge to the neck, especially if it's that far away from the focal point. <coughs> And then uh, if you have any questions on this paint over, like if any part was confusing on how I applied any value, just at Esther back to ask the questions. I'll be taking those in a second. Hopefully I don't forget. <laughs> I always say that and then I forget. Okay. All right. And then we have this hint like it's a whisper of bounce light just under the chin right above the neck just the smallest bit but before I do that I want to make sure the core shadow really speaks so I'm zooming all the way out and I'm just using the darkened layer just on the lower half of the face to the far side I'm just throwing in that little bit of shadow and then I'm going to bring in that bounce light and it kind of starts off the chest it's from her chest bouncing up so the most bounce light we're getting on a new layer is right here under her chin. And the rest, which I'm going to grab with the new value I've discovered, is moving out. See that? 
So find out what the hot spot is. That's the chin because it's responding to this hot spot here, which you don't have as illuminated enough. And I'm just going to sharpen it and clean it, and then I'm going to re-smudge it. Just because, you know, digital gives me that luxury to have that last little bit of adjustment. Okay, some other stuff I'm going to do with the soft brush now that I'm on a soft brush level. Again, you'll notice when it's time for a soft brush, you'll sense it. That it's time for me to clean some stuff up. If you haven't, if you don't know when it is, if you don't know when it's happening, that's mostly due to the fact that you just don't have enough mileage yet. You'll sense when it, you know what, I've had enough of this shit. I need to start cleaning some stuff up. That's usually what happens in my head. But yeah, I'm done. I can't. I, this brush is too big. It's too clunky for me to pull off the detail I'm aiming for. I've spent enough time on this. I need, I need a better brush right now. That's really how you know it's time. So soft brush means that I'm considering more, more feminine kind of characteristics for the forehead. So just here on the lowest part of the forehead, there's a little bit of shadow right under the brow bone. Sorry, right under the inner eyebrow and that fat, fat pocket, there's a, a little bit of diffuse just like that. Probably have to carry the eyebrow back forward. There's a touch of shadow there. And then there is some shadow on the lip. She doesn't really have that sad mouth. Right now our character has a sad mouth. I'm going to just go into liquify and adjust that. She doesn't have that strong a like a chin jowl thing and this part of the face it's just really needs a soft brush to address okay any questions um, zooming out so someone asks can you elaborate on why zooming out is so important in a painting like this why is it so crucial it's important to all kinds of paintings not just ones like this um, it's important because what's happened is that in the before we see that there isn't much of a value shift um, control over the changes that, that this tr drop in temperature something more global for the face it's hard to determine if you're zoomed in also if you're zoomed out here zoomed in here you're gonna see those but you're not gonna know how to pull them off you need to be zoomed out at the same level as what you're referencing for you to reference it pro properly and recreate it how can you recreate something if you're not at the you know the same level of that in the detail? How are you supposed to recreate a scale of a brush or a size of a brush or that much of a motion if you're zoomed in on the eyes so much? Then there's just how how difficult it is to track down bounce light. So apart from core shadows, which are your bread and butter, bounce light um, is the, it's, you know, delicate areas that are so hard to detect that one, you wouldn't detect them if you zoom in. It's hard to, if you zoomed in just in this area, you wouldn't see the greater gradient. You'd have to zoom out for you to see a major change. Um, but as well as a minor change. So major changes and minor changes are both visible when you zoom out. That's enough reason for you to stay zoomed out as long as possible. There's no extra amount of justification required for you to zoom out if zooming out as a criteria is for core shadows. Core shadows are everything to do with whether or not your shape is reading. And that's the difference between advanced art and, and kind of that career beginner art is that they don't really give a shit. Those career beginners they don't, they don't give a damn about their core shadows. They just, their lines carry the read and a couple of shadows here and there with some pretend bounce light somewhere and some ambient occlusion or something like that, if at all. So this more believable forehead shape, more believable face shape, it's just gone when it comes to that kind of zoom in. It's all about the detail in the eyes, all about the sparkles, all about the contrast, all about the saturation. Um, okay, so any more questions about this painting? Finally, I'm just going to grab a pure white and I'm just going to create some bouncing 
light here wherever the light is really sitting and this is my own little addition just stuff to add more to the skin the features as well the girl in the reference her eyes are closer together so if you wanted more likeness you'd have to bring her eyes closer together we have more of a shadow pocket here on the inner eye that I kept losing really really dark almost like she's wearing makeup on her upper eyes really important this shadow oh there goes my pen pressure this is one of the more important uh, core shadows on the face the eye socket and that's why I spent so much time on it I'm going to detail just a little bit for the sake of the after and if you don't know um, how important it is to work on the eye socket uh, please watch one of my latest videos on it. It's really important you know how much really happens in an eye socket in that upper eye crease. Really, really important you guys understand that. What it means for your portfolio to represent that properly. Alright, and then filter, liquefy. <coughs> And if you wanted the likeness, just bring the eyes closer in together. Uh, the face would actually be a lot more long as well, which might work when we bring the eyes closer in. And then we've got, I'm going to try to pull it off with dodge tool if I can. This part here is really bright, and that's what's causing that bounce light on the chin. Okay, so your contrast was pretty low. I'm actually going to dim the uh, forehead just a touch. And uh, the top of the head was a little bit crushed as well. And for it to make sense, you have to include some of that brightness on the top of the head somewhere. Just to show that the light source is moving in, in this direction. This shoulder here really bright one of the brightest values probably bright yes brighter than the nose and then you've got the light environment which is not dark enough just copy what you find in your reference it's really important that you do that it won't, won't make sense if you're skipping these aspects and then just these really sweeping brush strokes, just climbing radially. See how I shrink my brush as I bring in more of that brightness. Look how we've climbed, look how we've moved the painting. And I just want to uh, unflatten this part. Alright, so if you're working with a reference, copy the, 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 the light environment. Write that back, please. So before, very flat. You're not really reading what you're seeing here. You're not reading the shapes. It's all about the eyes and the likeness for you. And really, to get this kind of look in your art, you need to start reading the shapes. And that means you zoom out. If you're in a circle, you don't know you're in a circle till you zoom out. If you're in a cube, you don't know you're in a cube, you may know slightly by reaching an edge and that just gives you some semblance or abstract image of what an edge is, but it won't show you that you're actually part of a greater cuboid, a greater geometry, an edge that can fall, an edge that can be sharp. Until you zoom out, you can see the edge. <clears throat> and then you have the fact that close up, the gradients look really, really wide. And so that's why you're using a soft brush close up. Your it messes up with your art and looks over washed and over brushed is because you're so close. You're seeing things that would have looked sharp if you had zoomed out. You're seeing them as wider gradients, and so you you just simply cannot benefit from the beauty of a soft brush. Soft brush is a powerful tool. Soft brush is a valid tool. Write that back to me. 
um, that means that uh, to use it successfully and to pick up on those slight changes, those radial changes that are everything about an organic object, those gradual changes, you have to zoom out. So this question, um, kind of taking it on the challenges for the rest of the, the, the session, is that question is a, it's a really good question. Why should we zoom out? There's so many reasons to zoom out, and there's so little reason not to, and so much benefit from getting it, and so much damage to your work from not zooming out. That zooming out should be a default state for any early level in your drawing, and only when you are absolutely comfortable with the way your values have shifted, things look great realistically zoomed out, you start zooming in, things are a little messy, that's when you can start zooming in and addressing some detail. If, you, if, if you're going to blow it up that big, if the picture is going to be a poster, you know, you're going to have to have some detail. <clears throat> Usually the background matches the light intensity. How do you deal with the dark environment that has a bright light? I've been working in a piece like this and I'm afraid it won't work. Uh, well, she has something behind her, some kind of soft light. This is an olden day paint a picture or someone imitating something olden day. So it's something a weak or soft light coming from the sunlight that they've taken a picture of. Maybe a window. They didn't have a lot of interior electricity maybe. I, I'm not sure. But it's a dark room. It's not a well, well, well lit room, but it is the bright midday light. So that's why you're having soft shadows and it's maybe moving through some kind of curtain or or other obstructive um, addition to the studio that weakens the light even more, which softens the shadow, cast shadow edges even more. Um, but it's a dark room, and that's okay, but it's a direct light, still soft, and that's okay. There seems to be a, an exception each and every single time you try to describe this piece, and that's why you get scared, and that's why it gets complicating, uh, complicated, and that's why it's complicated. Um, formulating your own light environment where you have enough brightness on the character but the environment is still dark um, or you want it to be dark. It just depends on direct light. If there's a big black piece of fabric behind them that's understandable. If it's a big closed off, closed off room but with one window, a soft midday overcast light, it's just one exception, one little condition after another and you're just going to have to go through them until it starts looking right. You can still have enough contrast, a nice amount of contrast um, even with a weak light source, um, as long as your, 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 your surrounding values are okay. Not like pure black and pure white. You can still pull off a lot of nice contrast. Any questions at all? <clears throat> okay, so before, after, work on your contrast and repost this to the community so we can have a look. The other piece is this Frankenstein piece, and the reference wasn't posted. If you guys aren't posting your references, it, your work is going to get deleted. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not implementing this rule all the time, especially for newcomers. I want to give them a chance for those who have like one or two posts ever. Um, but please post your reference. I shouldn't have to go looking for it. But I found the reference for this. And the biggest problem that you have here is the light source is coming from below the face which makes it that much more creepy, but um, it's great lighting. Remember this for your villain challenges. It distorts the face, makes the face less human. We're used to seeing the sun above us, so that's why we like top-down light. Um, but <clears throat> it's the same problem. You're not blocking in core shadows. This entire region, yes, there are moments where it's bright, but compare this value to this white, it's absolutely, completely different value. So I'm just blocking in all of these components right now. You know, what's the what's the word for it? What's the word? I'm blocking it in without without hesitation, with no fear. I'm just, you know, with no shame, I'm just blocking that's not the term. I don't know what the term is. Just just blocking it in, you know? No questions asked, no hesitation. As I see it, the ranges, the averages, and you're averaging out. So if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, first of all, don't shrink your brush for these little tiny bits. Keep it large. It's not time to shrink your brush. And also, you're averaging, looking at the general area. If you can't catch an average, squint your eyes. Write that down. So the average for the top part of the nose is just this big shadow. Look at how well that, that, that worked to describe the nature of the light source in its direction. 
If you can't find an average, he's got a nice little Hulk Hogan mustache right there. It's okay if it's messy. We're still throwing in an, a, an accurate representation of that neighborhood there in its average. And we can adjust after. Okay, and then we've got the average for the lower part of the upper part of the chin. Everything is inverted when it comes to light source coming from below. Usually things that are dark become light. Usually things that are light become dark. Easy. Jaw lines usually catch the light right now. They're in the shadow. The light is so beneath. Cheekbones. Temples usually stay dark. Though. Temples and ears. There is light from above, but I guess you're canceling that out. Then you've got this this green, which is great, but you're using pure white here. And so any kind of color addition is not going to be a good idea. Um, also, you've canceled out the universal that we see on top of his head. That means that behind him, there shouldn't be anything visible. It should be all dark. <clears throat> so, color... Oh, God, for the love of Pete. Okay, so we're getting rid of that. And then we're also darkening. That area behind him. Okay. Because there just isn't enough light for the environment to wake up. If you're not taking the universal. Okay, and then we've got the fact that his neck isn't getting any light. Any questions at all? <laughs> Blocking with wild abandon. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> can form studies help with understanding light and shadows absolutely that's what form studies are all about that's what a form study is form is light and shadow on, on, on form what would a form study be about if not light and shadows form study being about geometry it's just, it's all one and the same. Now I'm just smudging. As is needed for organic patterns of any kind. Okay. And then I'm just going to soften some areas as needed. You really shouldn't have lasso sharp edges anywhere. And the smudging should help with the blocking. Another big problem you have is that way too much brightness sometimes in this piece. I would leave the brightest areas, the most exposed areas as the brightest components. So we've got a lot of this here that's really exposed oh, that's too much that the nose is very exposed here but again not directly it's just along the center and the, the brows here but the eyes are sunken in and I'm gonna go into the older layer and delete as I need to So before I start doing any of this, I'm going backward, and then this is the new layer, and I'm just deleting where I feel like we do have some brightness, the sunken in cheeks here, but not as bright as this whole section. Okay, 
then merge that down and just start blending, getting rid of some stuff. I do have to bring in one more little bright piece there. And then he is glowing. He is, there is a glow back. A bloom kind of happening. Um, color dodge. Oops. Just along. Here and there. Probably leave the bloom another time. So before, I don't have enough of that shadow happening around the face. The forehead seems to have enough brightness that the light is facing the face instead of being beneath it. What we're trying to do is depict that the light is coming from beneath. And that means all the shadows are pointing up. So we're kind of throwing these shadows to move up, keeping them sharp. Don't want to over soften because it's Frankenstein. But some areas do get pretty sharp. Oops. Okay. So this is without the primary. You need to find that primary, because this is a, a room light and then a spotlight pointing up at his face. Any questions at all? This is a, it's not a bad reference. You, you have pretty good black and white. It's a lot of contrast for a student starting out, so I wouldn't recommend a lot of contrast. Um, it has a lot of texture detail and it's not a very appealing face for you to build as your default uh, but um, a bad reference would be a magazine cover some kind of video or music video like something commercial um, any um, magazine com like uh, ads on in a magazine or anything like that where the shadows are completely removed and you have this soft light gradient over everything and the super exposure and saturation <clears throat> any other questions at all yeah bad photography is bad reference really really well said um, any questions at all Uh, so, uh, last little bit of announcements, please move over into the Reddit uh, uh, link for our, let me find it, my subreddit to transfer our community over here. Um, uh, I'm going to try to get everyone into this, uh, into this uh, as soon as possible, but I'm officially announcing it now. So please move in and, and start getting comfortable with the layout. I'm going to start moving in some sections soon once I get used to using this. I don't, I lost my login, <laughs> so I have to retrieve that, it's really complicated. Um, and that's it, thank you everyone for joining, I'm really happy to be back. Look out for the uh, resource pack, For there will be a resource pack this time, uh, for our community challenge starting February 1st, and then the, the due date will be the 28th, but you guys can still get started now on your write-ups, you will have to hand in a narrative written for your villain, remember it's fantasy based, not modern, no sci-fi. All magical elements, um, really fun stuff, fantasy, uh, medieval kind of villain design. Um, and that's it. Thank you everyone for joining. I'll see you guys in class on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Bye everyone.